In this video, we're going to continue learning about lifetime elision rules. The compiler uses three rules to figure out the lifetimes of the references when they aren't explicit annotations. The first rule applies to input lifetimes, and the second and third rules apply to output lifetimes. If the compiler gets to the end of the three rules, and there are still references for which it can't figure out lifetimes, the compiler will stop with an error. The first rule is that the compiler assigns a lifetime parameter to each parameter that's a reference. In other words, a function with one parameter gets one lifetime parameter. A function with two parameters gets two separate lifetime parameters, and so on. The second rule is that if there is exactly one input lifetime parameter, that lifetime is assigned to all output lifetime parameters. As you can see here in this example, we have only one input lifetime parameter, which means that lifetime is going to be assigned to the output parameter. The third rule is that if there are multiple input lifetime parameters, but one of them is a reference to self or a mutable reference to self, because this is a method, the lifetime of self is assigned to all output lifetime parameters. This third rule makes methods much nicer to read and write because fewer symbols are necessary. Let's pretend with a compiler. We'll apply these rules to figure out the lifetimes of the references in the signature of the first word function. The signature starts without any lifetimes associated with the references. Then the compiler applies the first rule which specifies that each parameter gets its own lifetime. We'll call it A as usual. Right now you see the inferred lifetime annotations because that's what Rust sees when it infers this, but we're going to manually type them in. So here we can add the lifetime annotation of A and we'll pass it here as well. The second rule applies because there is exactly one input lifetime. The second rule specifies that the lifetime of the one input parameter gets assigned to the output lifetime. So that's why the lifetime parameter A is assigned to the output. Once again, my code editor can infer this or Rust can infer this and show it to my code editor. So I get it in gray, but we can explicitly add that. Now, all the references in this function signature have lifetimes and the compiler can continue its analysis without needing the programmer to annotate the lifetimes in this function signature. Anyway, we don't need to explicitly specify them here because Rust can easily infer them. But now let's look at another example. And this time we're going to use the longest function. Let's start off by applying the first rule. Each parameter gets its own lifetime. This time we have two parameters instead of one. So we have two lifetimes, which means it's going to look like this. Here we're going to have A and B. The first one gets A and the second one gets B. You can see that the second rule doesn't apply because there is more than one input lifetime. The third rule doesn't apply either because longest is a function rather than a method. So none of the parameters are self. After working through all three rules, we still haven't figured out what the return types lifetime is. This is why we get an error trying to compile the code without lifetime annotations. Or in this example, it would be much better to actually return something so you could see it for yourself. Now we're getting a proper error because we are missing a lifetime specifier. The compiler worked through the lifetime elision rules, but still couldn't figure out all the lifetimes of the references in the signature. So we need to add explicit lifetime annotations. And pretty much all we need to do here is specify that we want to return a string attached to lifetime A. And then we can remove this part here and say that this is also attached to lifetime A. And that would fix everything. But now let's move on to lifetimes in method definitions. When we implement methods on a struct with lifetimes, we use the same syntax as that of generic type parameters. Where we declare and use the lifetime parameters depends on whether they're related to the struct fields or the method parameters and return values. Lifetime names for struct fields always need to be declared after the impl keyword and then used after the struct's name because those lifetimes are part of the struct's type. So let's go back to our important excerpt example. As you can see, here we define the lifetime annotation and we attach it to the part. In method signatures inside the impl block, references might be tied to the lifetime of references in the structs field, or they might be independent. In addition, the lifetime elision rules often make it so that lifetime annotations aren't necessary in method signatures. First, we'll use a method named level whose only parameter is a reference to self and whose return value is an i32, which is not a reference to anything. The lifetime parameter declaration after impl 
and its use after the type name are required, but because of the first elision rule, we're not required to annotate the lifetime of the reference to self. Here's an example where the third lifetime elision rule applies. And I've zoomed out quite a bit because my code editor gave me quite long lifetime names. But here we have two input lifetimes. So Rust applies the first lifetime elision rule and gives both self and announcement their own lifetimes. Then, because one of the parameters is a reference to self, the return type gets the lifetime of self, as you can see over here. And all lifetimes have been accounted for. This is why methods are often easier to work with than standalone functions when it comes to lifetimes. The third elision rule handles a lot of common cases automatically. Personally, I find the lifetime elision rules really helpful because they let me write less boilerplate code. Most of the time, the compiler can figure out what I mean, and when it can't, it gives me a clear error message telling me exactly what lifetime annotations I need to add. 